Lewis, Lewis, Lewis. Lewis Stephen. Ladies and gentlemen, just a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, uh, wonderful actress Carrie Coon from the new movie Boston Strangler will be out here to talk to us right over there. Mm -hmm. But first, yes. my first guest this evening is the Vice President of the United States. She's the first woman, the first black American, and the first South Asian American to hold the office. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Vice President Kamala Harris. <laughs> Madam Vice President, it is an honor to have you here. Thank you for stopping by again. This is your sixth visit to The Late Show. It is my sixth visit. Five in person. Five and five in person. Yeah. And here's, here's the thing, is that this is the first time I've interviewed you since you actually got all, you know, fancy and executive branchy uh -huh. over there. <laughs> After two years as the Vice President of the United States in this high constitutional office, are you... Has it sunk in? Are you used to it? Is it work a day? Or do you still wake up and go, I'm the Vice President of the United States? Okay, so here's the thing, because you and I have visited before. I know you love Veep. <laughs> I do. I, I love Veep. Is it accurate? There is. There are bits of it that are actually quite accurate. And, um, okay, so last week, so my team, they were, we were having long days as usual, and a member of my team decided to do something really sweet for me. So I was out of my office in the West Wing. I was having a meeting across the street and we're walking back toward my office and he says, I need to tell you something. So I wanted, you know, the winter is almost over. It's really cold today. and We haven't lit your fireplace. So I decided when you were in that meeting to light the fireplace. But he forgot to open the flute. <laughs> Service was like, ma'am, you could not go back to your office. <laughs> Holy cow. Because there was smoke everywhere. But it was the or just sweetest hang a hand gesture. in there and it get was, a beautiful cure on it. It's just... <laughs> mm -hmm. So there are those moments. Oh, sure. Um, but sure. otherwise, you know, but I actually I met Julia Louis Dreyfus at um, recently. Oh, really? At an event at the White House. It was the first time I met her, oh. and she's terrific. But I I too love lovely. that show. Yeah. Um uh there's a there's a uh in the, one of the themes of the show is that her character, uh Selena Meyer, is frustrated by the sometimes vague duties of the role. Like it's a it's a high constitutional office, but it's not prescribed so much about what you're supposed to be doing. Is does that ring true? Like what does to, what is the actual role on a daily basis as you have found it? Well, I have the great privilege of serving with Joe Biden, who was president of the United States. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Exactly right. Exactly but, right. But, and and was vice president, right? Does that affect so, it? Does, does it? Does he understand what he it's like does, to be a vice president? He does, and he is... He really is a true partner, and he understands the job. And remember, we came in during the height of the pandemic. Yes. And so, so much of the work was about, okay, we've got to cover a lot of bases, and let's figure out how between us we can do it. Mm -hmm. But he is um, an extraordinary leader, and I wish that people could see what I see, because uh, there's only one person who sits behind that resolute desk. And the decisions that that person has to make are the decisions that nobody else in the country can make. And he's an extraordinary leader. <laughs> really is. Really is. That's an excellent. That's an excellent answer. And uh, the question was, what is the job of the vice president? <laughs> And your answer is part of the job, I'm guessing. Well, you know, my job is to do... I mean, for example, I'll tell you. Um, I was recently in Munich at the Munich Security Conference. Yes. And, um, and the job there was to stand up. And as you know, most of my career I spent as a prosecutor. And I declared that um, we, the United States of America, believe that Russia has committed crimes against humanity. Yes. <laughs> What is and the significance? Say, what is the significance 
Uh, sorry to interrupt, yeah, but I was just no. curious, as someone who was a, a DA and an AG, what is the significance of you saying that in that moment on the world stage? I think there's a great deal of significance, and in fact, I contextualized my, my speech in that statement in just that way, that as a former prosecutor, I understand the significance of reviewing and looking at the evidence and comparing it to the law, and when we look at evidence that the UN, for example, has produced that a, a child, a girl as young as four years old, was assaulted by a Russian soldier. When we look at um, the images we all saw of a, of a pregnant woman who was at a maternity hospital who was slaughtered, um, that there is no question that these are crimes against humanity. And we must declare it as so, and we as the United States of America must speak clearly and forcefully about the, about the need to maintain standards that are international rules and norms around behaviors such as that and to ensure consequence and accountability. And um, so that was one of my most recent um, roles as Vice President of the United States, to stand before our allies and partners around the world, in particular in the context of our transatlantic relationships, and to not only state our position, but to encourage others to stand with us, as we have been doing since February 24th of last year, during the um, and during this year of this unprovoked attack. What, what do you make of um, someone like Governor DeSantis, who, while there is a strain of isolationism all throughout American history, yeah. is saying that this is not in America's strategic interest yeah. to side with the Ukrainians and offer them the material aid they need to defend themselves against an invading power? So, as vice president, I have now met with over 100 world leaders. Presidents, prime ministers, chancellors, and kings. And when you have had the experience of meeting and, and understanding the significance, again, of international rules and norms and the importance of the United States of America standing firm and clear about the significance of sovereignty and territorial integrity, the significance of standing firm against any nation that would try to take by force another nation, if you really understand the issues, you probably would not make statements like that. Suggesting that perhaps he doesn't understand the issues. Well, you, you have said that you intend to run in 2024 with President Biden. Is that your way of letting us know that he intends to run? Well, as the president has said, we're not gonna make any announcements tonight on this okay. show, all but... Right. <laughs> you, so it's okay. but he wouldn't mind. But, he wouldn't yeah, mind. no, he wouldn't mind at all. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> you getting out in front of it? I'm sure President but... Obama used Joe Biden to float a few <laughs> ideas out there for him. Here and there. Go ahead. The, Just as, say it. as our Joe Biden has said, he intends to run, and if he does, I will be running with him. Okay, so he does intend to run. <laughs> <He does. laughs> we have to take a quick break, but we will be right back with more Vice President Kamala Harris, everybody. Stick around.